Hallelujah! Maayong gabi or maayong adlaw or maayong buntag kaya natunanan. Wherever you are in the world, I say hello to all of you, praying and hoping, believing, wishing that all of you is in good health. Hallelujah! By the grace of Jesus and that you are going strong in your desire. To live your life for the glory of the Lord, following the example of Jesus, Hallelujah, and to live your life doing work or the ministry of Jesus in partnership with the Holy Spirit. Remember that every move you make, you ought to do it under the guidance and direction of the Holy Spirit. And so today, as we proceed, let me ask. You to join with me, with me as we pray for God's blessings for His Word today. Father, thank you for this time again. It's such an honor, Lord, for all of us to work in partnership with Your Holy Spirit, so that You can advance Your kingdom cause here on earth. Thank you, the Lord, for Your goodness for Your people today. Thank you, the Lord, for the privilege of sharing the Word today. Salamat kay the Father. Bless this, O Lord. Thank you for the supply, O Lord God, of the Holy Spirit from you today. In Jesus' name, Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> so last Sunday, we were talking about Second Corinthians three, and we found out three very important things. Last Sunday, one is that all believers connected in Christ Jesus has has a ministry. Uh, or is involved in a ministry. This is not just any other ministry. This is the ministry of advancing the kingdom. This is the ministry of preaching the good news. This is the ministry of winning the lost, making disciples. Hallelujah! That's the ministry that we are all uh, involved in. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Are you there? Are you joining with me? Do you believe that you are? Included in the ministry of Jesus, Amen. And another thing that we learned last Sunday is that, Hallelujah, we are confident in uh, doing this ministry. We have the confidence in doing this ministry, and the confidence does not come from us; it comes from the Lord by the power of His Holy Spirit, Amen. So, whatever you are, no. Sometimes you look at yourself, na morag di ni mo kaya, hindi mo kaya. You try to, you know, put down yourself and say, "I'm not able. I'm not like this." But your confidence, my confidence, the confidence that we will use is from the Lord. Amen. That's what the Apostle Paul said in in the Word. Such confidence as this is ours through Christ before God. That's verse number four. Of Second Corinthians, so our confidence as we do the ministry comes from the Lord. It does not come from our diploma or our educational training, seminars, conventions that we have attended, certificates that we receive. Our confidence comes from the Lord. Amen. So even if you are a farmer, you are a you are a store owner, small store owner, you are a fisherman, or whatever. You are you. You work is in life. You can have that confidence in ministry because it's not you. It is Jesus. It's the Lord. It's the Holy Spirit working. Another thing is we have competence, competence, ability, man, no, kakayahan, iba. And that competence is not ours. It's God who makes made us competent. That's what the Apostle Paul said in in verse number seven. He has made us competent as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. That is why our competence is not because we are eloquent, we are good speakers, we are brilliant, we can come up with all the right words, all the terms, all the high, high, high polluting terms. No, 
our competence is because God made us competent as much as He called us, and He gives us that confidence, and we're able to do ministry, simple ministry, just obedience, just sharing, and the, Lord, the Holy Spirit will do the rest. So I'm sharing this, I am reviewing this for all of you who are listening to me because, because it's now your turn to be used by God. Paul was, using, Paul was sharing this during his time. It was his turn to be used by God. Now it is our turn. It's your turn. It's our turn to be used by God. Hallelujah. And I'm thankful that God is using me to a certain degree. Amen. And others are, God is using in a higher, higher degree compared to the way he's using me. But it's not more of the degrees. It's not about how you know, the degree, the high achievements that we have. It's about our faithfulness to the call of the Lord in our life. Amen. We all rejoice in that privilege, in that opportunity. So thank God that uh, because He's using me, He can. He is also will use you. He, he, he can use you. He will use you for as long as you will continue to follow Him, walk with Him. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, as we continue this today, my dear brothers and sisters, we'll proceed from verse 7 to verse, uh, the last verse of verse uh, of chapter uh, 3, which is verse 18. And here, we will learn several things, three things, as we answer what kind of ministry are we involved in. What kind of ministry are we involved in? I'm not talking about the ministry of ushering. I'm not talking about ministry of prayer. I'm not talking about ministry of, you know, helps or dance or whatever, generosity. That's not what I'm talking about. I will answer that question through reading some of the passages here. And we'll find out at least three, uh, at least three descriptions, words that will describe what this ministry in which we are involved in with the power of the Holy Spirit. Remember that this ministry is not really <coughs> our ministry. This is in partnership with the Holy Spirit. We are partnering with the Holy Spirit. We are His temple. The reason why God the Father has given the Holy Spirit to us and He now lives inside of us, according to 1 Corinthians 6 verse 19. Remember that? Do you, do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who now lives in your home? was given to you, you see? So the Holy Spirit lives inside of us because He wants to use our life as a physical, visible, audible instrument. Eh? As some kind of a letter that others can see because they will not see without a physical representation. And so here are some descriptions, at least three. One is, this ministry is a glorious ministry. Verse 7, now if the ministry that brought death, which was engraved in letters on stone, came with glory, so that the Israelites could not look steadily at the face, at the face of Moses because of his glory, fading though it was, will not the ministry of the Spirit be even more glorious? There you are. Whose ministry is this one? It's not your ministry. It's not my ministry. It's the Holy Spirit's ministry. The ministry of the Spirit. And because it is the Spirit's ministry, it is a glorious ministry. Hallelujah. So when we are partnering with the Holy Spirit, we are joining, you know, the once-in-a-lifetime ministry or opportunity to, to do ministry, to get involved in a glorious ministry. Hallelujah. Glorious because God Himself is actually and personally involved in this ministry. It is not our ministry. It is the ministry of the Lord using our simple and ordinary, our ordinary lives. So it is a glorious ministry. And the, the word glorious means, you know, marked with great beauty and splendor. That is one meaning of the word glorious. Majestic, grand, you know. Marked with much beauty and splendor. So when we involve in a ministry, wow, what a privilege, what an opportunity. You know, when we are sharing, you know, when we are sharing the gospel, when we are visiting homes and, you know, ministering to people there, you know, wow, please remember it is a glorious ministry. Beautiful, grand, great. Hallelujah. Why? Because we are partnering with the Holy Spirit. 
Amen? Let's continue in the next verse. For what was glorious has no glory now in comparison with the surpassing glory. He's talking about the time of Moses. Moses has, was glorious in his ministry. You know? And if what was fading away came with glory, you know, how much greater is the glory of that which lasts? You know? Therefore, now, this is a glorious ministry, my dear brothers and sisters, compared to the ministry of Moses because their ministry, especially at the time when he went to up the mountain to receive you know, the Ten Commandments, and then coming down from that experience, you know, his face shone with the glory of the Lord. And yet that glory was passing. It was not permanent on Moses. In fact, he has to cover his face so that it will not be discovered that the glory that he has was fading, was diminishing. But the glory that God has placed upon us is not fading, will not fade. It's not diminishing, will not diminish. Why? Because it is the Holy Spirit Himself who now lives inside of us. And the Holy Spirit is the very essence of what it means to be God. And now that lives, He lives inside of you and me. Hallelujah. As He uses us, we are involved in a glorious partnership. Praise be to God. Amen. That is why, you know, it's really tempting when you do ministry on the one hand, because things can happen, you know, supernaturally. Uh, things may happen. And if you are not spiritually prepared and mature enough, you might be tempted to grab the glory unto himself and begin to claim that it is because of you that you have these things happening. But the truth is, it is not. It all belongs to God. We learned that in our previous Lesson. So in verse 12, Paul is saying, as he continues in this portion of his letter, because of this ministry, he says, we have a hope. Since we have such a hope, it is a hope-filled ministry. Because it is a glorious ministry, it is a hope-filled ministry. You know? Why it is so hope-filled? Because it's not fading. It's not diminishing. You see, it will only keep on increasing. In fact, you can read that word, ever-increasing glory in the last portion of that chapter, of this chapter. Hallelujah. Are you not excited as you think about this opportunity that God is giving to all of us? That's why I continue to share this with you because I want you all to capture this in your heart. Because sometimes we become tired, we become weary, we become frustrated or disillusioned because when we get involved in ministry, uh, we hardly see any result worth thanking the Lord. Sometimes all that we notice are frustrations and setbacks and, and failures, you know, and people not really growing, people not really maturing. And sometimes we notice of the fight in fighting and bickering, misunderstanding, the fleshly manifestation is that all where we notice. And it, you know, sometimes swallows the hope that we have. But the truth is, as Paul says, this is a glorious ministry, and that is why we have hope. It should be a hope-filled ministry. I don't know how can we be involved in partnership with the Holy Spirit and not have hope. If it is our ministry, then it would be easy for us to lose hope, lose our joy, lose our, you know, exuberance in, in doing the work. But because it's not our ministry, it's the Holy Spirit. We're just simple partners with Him. Then we continue to have hope. Then we have that hope. And hope brings in excitement and joy beyond compare. And we have a possibility, possib uh, we have great positivity. Very, meaning we are very positive as we look forward. Because our being positive is not the product of training our mind to be positive. It is the product of the presence of the Spirit in us, knowing that He is inside of us, knowing that He will never leave us nor forsake us. He will be with you forever. That's what Jesus did in John 16. And so Paul says we have such a hope in doing this ministry. Sometimes when you step back a couple of 
you know, feet away from what you are doing, that is when you will see, you know, the beauty of what you're doing. But when you're right very close, sometimes you cannot see. <laughs> Take a few steps back from what you are doing and have the eyes of the Lord. And then you will begin to see that indeed it is God that's doing. It's not you. It is not you who will change the heart of people. It's not you who will not change. It's not you who will change your mind. It's not you who will change their decisions. It's God. You see? So Paul says we have such a hope. Hallelujah. It is a hope-filled ministry. There is nothing to be ashamed about when we are involved in ministry. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. There is no need for fear. There is no need for intimidation to roll in our minds. There is no need for timidity or being hesitant. In fact, we have this verse. We quote it often. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but He gave us power. He gave us power. He gave us, you know, love and self-discipline. You see? Because God wants us to be full of hope. Hallelujah. It is a hope-filled ministry. And then the third one is it's a life-transforming ministry. You know? Why? Because of the Holy Spirit. Again, the Holy Spirit. Remember, this is His ministry. This is now ministry. Uh, all we do is share, share the gospel, verbalize, you know, the gospel, so that people, our loved ones, our friends, they can hear. They can hear the word of the Lord. They can hear it as if it is God that's speaking to them. Of course, it's God that's speaking to them, but God is using, using our voice, our mouth, our faculties. You see? But we know it is not God. It is the Lord. It's Him. It is His ministry. So, it is a life-transforming ministry. Where can we read that? We read that in verse number 18. I jump over some verses there, but we'll be returning to that in a while, if not today, next Sunday. You know? It says here, And we who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory are being transformed into His likeness with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. You see? It's a life-transforming ministry because it is the ministry of the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit who can change life. In the previous verse, it is the Holy Spirit who gives freedom. Hallelujah. It is the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, the Spirit of Christ who will take away the veil, the covering, the masks from the eyes of people. They will begin to see the glory, the majesty, the beauty, the splendor, the greatness, the goodness, the faithfulness of God. Hallelujah. And they will be attracted once they see. It is a life-transforming ministry. That is why, my dear brothers and sisters, when you don't involve in ministry, you deprive the people of the opportunity to partake of this life-transforming ministry that comes with the Spirit. That is why Paul says, I am, dead. I am a debtor. I'm not ashamed to proclaim the gospel of Christ because it is the power of God to everyone who believes, to the Jew first, to, to the Greeks. But previous to that, he says, I am a debtor. Na ako'y utang. Nagkaroon ako ng utang. Nakairan kong bagay, bayaran kong bagay. That's why I will proclaim the good news of Jesus. Because if I don't, people will, have, will not have the opportunity to partake, to have a taste of the glory, the beauty, the majesty, the depth of God's love, His grace, His mercy. You see? It is a ministry that brings transformation, my dear brothers and sisters. What is transformation? Huh? What is transformation? Transformation is not repair. You know, when you repair a house, you know, you take some of the old part of the house that's already, 
deteriorating and uh, uh, termite eaten. Yeah? And then you brought in some new parts to replace the old ones that's been destroyed or already rotten. But practically, the house is still the same. The same on size, the same on, you know, features. Yeah. But when it is transformed, transform is, you know, a total, <laughs> complete and thoroughly. And you can hardly tell the difference from the former compared with the latter. The Greek word for transformation is metamorphosis. We are all familiar with the word because we learned that as early in our science lesson. You know? And a good example of that is a caterpillar that eventually becomes a butterfly when it goes through that process, you know, of, uh, you know, I don't know what they were process. <laughs> so metamorphosis. When you do ministry, yeah, because when you do ministry, you will spend a lot of time in the Holy Spirit's presence, my dear brothers and sisters. And because of spending time, lots of time in the Holy Spirit's presence, meditating on the Word, you know, reflecting and everything, we'll take a look at that closer the next Sunday, you know. Then you will transform. The same will happen to the people that you are serving, you are ministering unto. The same will happen to them. If, if you will continue serving them, ministering to them, don't be frustrated with some setbacks in doing ministry. Don't stop simply because others are not yet changing. Don't give up simply because others you know, have not become what you wanted them to be, what you have prayed for them to be. Don't give up. Let the Holy Spirit continue His job. Meanwhile, let Him continue to use your life. Let Him continue to use your life so you, He and you can serve. Remember, it should be a field, hope-filled ministry. You don't get discouraged. You only have hope overflowing. Hallelujah. I, I think I still remember Paul uh, used another verse, another word, another word for hope or another passage using hope. Let me remember where it is. Yeah, it's in Romans 15, uh, verse 13. Romans 15, verse 13. Paul talks about hope here. May the God of hope, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him so that you may overflow in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, how does God fill you with hope? He can fill you with His hope so that you will overflow with this same hope as you minister to others only when you spend lots of time in His presence. Reflecting, meditating, waiting, soaking before Him. Amen. Through the Holy Spirit, through the enabling work of the Holy Spirit. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, what kind of ministry are we involved in? Why is it so important that all of us will remember and know and act on what we know that we are to minister? Share the word, you know, talk to someone else, share our life story, visit them and bring them something, anything that you do, you know. Directly to people, to persons. Not, do not just do. Some people are, you know, contented with doing ministry from afar. You know, they are there on stage and they are leading song. I mean, that's a good one there. You know. But you are not involved in life, in the lives of people directly. It, it's from a distance. And the people from a distance has the tendency to idolize you and look at you as some kind of perfect person. So anointed, so special, because you're always there on stage, you know, with the best clothes and, you know, best presentation. But when you get involved to their level, you go down to their level, get to them as close as possible, play with them, eat with them, go to the beach with them, go to the farm with them, walk with them in their journey. Will the glory of the Lord will still be seen in your life and through your life? 
Will they be able to see that it is really God that is at work in your life? Then they will know how much you have gone through in life. As a walker with God, as a pilgrim with God, they will hear your stories directly in a regular setting, life, regular life setting. Because in, the, in that setting, you will be able to share your heart, share your life, and they will be able to look at you in the closest way possible. They will hear stories. And it is in that moment that they will say, wow, God is doing something good and glorious in, in this person's life. Now I know what she has gone through. Uh, now I know what he has gone through. And yet look at him. He's still going strong in the Lord, full of hope, full of faith, full of confidence. You see? It's totally different when you are doing ministry from afar. That means you are doing the ministry directly close with people that you seek to minister, that you seek to influence for the glory of Jesus. Hallelujah. So, this is a glorious ministry. This is a hope-filled ministry. This is a life-transforming, life-changing ministry. And we all know that uh, ministry, uh, the, that the, the life will change. Uh, usually, it's a process. You know? How we wish that we can change life by a flick of our finger, just like a you know? Because we are used to seeing such kind of transformation when we watch movies, you know? When we watch movies, somebody, you know, found a stone and then he put the stone into his or her mouth. And upon swallowing the stone, he will like that and be transformed from weakness to strength to superhuman strength. Or somebody will, do, you know, shake a, a wand, you know, a small stick and a do like that, and then the, the, the object there becomes transformed from an ugly frog to a you know nice, good-looking, handsome prince. We're used to seeing that kind of idea. And so sometimes we apply that in our Christian context, and we expect that the people that we are ministering who are attending our life group or our house church gathering, you know, in a short period of time, they will become superhuman. They will become super anointed. They will become super holy. And if it's not happening, we become frustrated, lose our hope. But today, I want you to know our hope is not in the results. Our hope is in the God who called us. Our hope is in the God who made us competent and confident. Our hope is in the God who gave us His word and His promise. Our hope is in the God who invited us to partner with Him in His ministry. Don't put your hope on the results because results will always vary. The result of someone is not the same as the result of your own ministry. Do not compare results. You know, it's frustrating and discouraging when you do that. Focus on the Lord. That is why in verse 18, I want you to go back to verse 18. And we who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory, are being transformed. We are being transformed. Not only the ones that we are ministering to are being transformed, we who are also ministering are being transformed. All of us are slowly being transformed with ever-increasing glory. I mean, look at that word there, ever-increasing glory, meaning it doesn't stop. It keeps on going. Ever-increasing glory which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. That is why no Christian should reply when he is asked, how are you? No Christian should reply, still the same. Desaya, mao lang giapon, ganun pa rin, in Tagalog, ganun pa rin. Mao lang giapon, so mao lang giapon. Have you not read this line? That when you are in the Lord, partnering with Him, reflecting on His goodness, and His glory, beauty, and everything, you are being transformed. You should, you should be totally different today compared to who you were last week, last month, last year. Amen? If you are connected with the Spirit, if the Spirit is allowed, you know, to work in you. So, hallelujah. I'm sharing this with you, not just to entertain your mind, and your thoughts. I'm sharing this with you because I believe this is the word that God wants us all to have. 
that we will understand that each one of us, God has a calling on our life. He wants us to be involved in ministry. He wants us. God wants to use us. Amen? Amen? So God wants to use your life. Hallelujah. Huh? He wants to use your life. Remember, He has called you into ministry. He puts confidence in you. He made you competent. Hallelujah. The Spirit has been given. And this ministry, this work that we are involved in is a glorious work. It is a hope, hope-filled work. Hallelujah. Hope-filled work. It is a life-transforming work. Not only that the people we are serving are being changed. We ourselves are being changed from glory to glory. Which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. So let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness and grace to us. Thank you for changing us day by day, moment by moment. Thank you that you will keep on changing us, O oh God, from one degree of glory to the next degree of glory. Our intimacy will grow, our maturity will grow in every aspect of our life, our prayer life, our passion to serve, you know, everything, O oh Lord God, for your goodness and for your honor. Salamat, O Lord. Holy Spirit, those who are listening, those who are watching, O Lord God. Lord, that none of them will just continue to watch and watch and watch, view and view and view, and nothing happening in their lives. But I pray that they will begin to partake your life-giving word, O Lord. They will continue, Lord God, to partake your sin-breaking word, O Lord. Hallelujah. Sickness, Lord God, will be broken over their lives. They will receive strength and healing from you. Demonic entities, Lord God, bandages and curses will be broken. As the Spirit of God will work in their lives and the word of the Lord will take its effect on their lives. The blood of Jesus being applied on each one's life. Salama, O Lord. Thank you, dear Lord. Hallelujah, O oh God. Thank you. Oh Lord, thank you. Thank you that you have invited us to be involved in this glorious ministry of sharing the gospel, winning souls and making disciples. Thank you for this is a hope-filled ministry. Our hope is in you, Lord, because it is your work. It's not our work. Our hope is that people will come and know you and people will grow and will mature, O oh Lord God. Our hope is that those who have gone away, O oh Lord, for whatever reason, Lord, they will continue to honor you, and love you, and serve you wherever they are right now. I ho our hope is that those who have, who have received seeds of God's word in their heart, Lord God, whatever, Lord God, are the situations today, you will remember them, O oh God, and they will remember you. Our hope is that your glory and majesty will continue to be revealed and experience by them and in them. Salamat, O Lord. I want to say thank you sa mga gihimo and animo. Thank you for all that you have done. Thank you for answering many of our prayers, especially prayers, Lord God, on behalf of those who are sick, O Lord. Thank you, God, for those who have been set free and delivered and saved, O Lord God. Thank you. We rejoice in you. It's not a result. We cannot claim anything for ourselves. Everything belongs to you, Lord. So thank you. We bless you again today in Jesus' name. Amen.